hey guys welcome to another video how are you guys doing if you're new hey don't forget to hit that subscribe button okay so last month which was january i was so freaking happy oh we're in march already happy new month <laughs> But in January, I read four books and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I read four books. Yay. You know, for someone just getting back into reading, it's quite a uh, feat. Yeah. So I was so happy. This month, February. Why am I saying this month? It's already March. But let's just assume we're still in February. Okay. In February, I read six books. I read six books, guys. I'm so freaking happy. Like I, six books in 28 days. Oh yeah anyway so what i did was i wanted to read books that have love in their title because you know february is the month of love you know love and romance and kisses and and all that stuff so that was what i did i picked all the books i had that had love in the title so i'm going to tell you about, guys about it i'm going yeah i'm just going to gist you generally the first book i read is the brightest and this is the only book that didn't have love in the title because this was the first book i picked up like I just picked it up without even thinking about the valentines or anything love and stuff like that so brightest by ellen huang if you guys watched my january wrap up i read these two books by ellen huang the kiss quotient and the art principle i really love them that was why i bought the third one but i think the kiss quotient is the first book the brightest is supposed to be the second and then the hat principle is the third so each of them talk about the stories of like their friends or will i say their brothers but you can actually read any one of them without reading the other two it doesn't matter you still understand the story that's the cool thing i like about the book this one talked about stella and michael michael is in a way related to this one that talks about kai and mc mc ms me yeah s me and then this one talks about kwan and Anna. I really liked this one because this one made me feel a lot of more emotions But that's not what this video is about. I told you about these two in the other one from the other two books You will see that Kai had autism like that's what Ellen Huang writes about all the books are about autism People and how they fall in love or how they express their love which is actually quite nice to learn from Kai is autistic and he feels like he cannot feel any emotion okay because his friend died his best friend died and he could not grieve for his friend so he felt like okay he's doomed he cannot feel any emotion but his mother wants him to actually find the love of his life so the mother went all the way to vietnam to go get his bride like she went to get a girl named Esme, and Esme is like a single mother but kai's mother didn't know that she has a child but anyway she she told M S me oh my god M C S me she told her S me that she should come live with her son and if her son falls in love you know stuff like that then she really really likes her she wants her to be a daughter-in-law and stuff like that but story 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 S me did it because she wanted to get citizenship but along the line changed her mind she started to fall in love with Kai and she started noticing some things but she told Kai I love you and Kai was like I don't love you because he didn't really understand that what he was feeling is love you know it's kind of crazy but you guys go read it I, I yeah go read it the next book i read is this one the love hypothesis oh my god the love hypothesis by ali azelwood i saw this everywhere and i read it and it's actually really interesting it's about adam carson and olive and olive was trying to convince her friend that she had already moved on like from the ex-boyfriend which she didn't even really love in the first instance but a best friend was like trying to avoid you know she didn't want to date a friend's friend a friend's ex because she felt like olive still had uh, feelings for the guy but she you know but Olive didn't give a damn so she had to convince her friend that she was in another relationship or she was seeing someone so her friend was coming out in the hallway and then BAM she just kissed any guy like any guy that was coming and she kissed Adam and Adam is like <laughs> in the old school like he's one of the most feared professors because people People say it's always grumpy. Yeah, it's, it's grumpy meets sunshine. Honestly, I love the beginning where she put on contact, expires contact lens and she could not see. 
but she was in the bathroom she went into a bathroom n- not knowing who she was talking to but she was talking to a guy it happened to be adam but she didn't know at that point and that time she was just trying to get admission into the school for her masters and stuff like that but i really really loved the way their love developed and i love the fact that she still fought for love in the story it's actually really interesting honestly i liked it i enjoyed it i, fi- I think i finished it in a day which was actually I say actually a lot god help me the book just describes adam as this guy that is very huge and then she she's then the next one i read is love on the brain <laughs> love on the brain by aliezo wood too like you, you guys saw this coming right you saw this coming because i read the love hypothesis so definitely i should read love on the brain because it follows i really liked it it's about levi i don't know if it's levi or levi levi and b levi and b are like enemies but it's not really enemies because Levi had a crush on B but he could, he could not express it all the while they were in school but B took it as he ate her I hope you guys get what I'm saying today. B thought Levi ate her because of the way he always treated her in school like if B is coming like this and Levi is here Levi would just turn away like so everybody saw it as he really can't stand her he hates her so it's kind of like enemies but not that enemies you know so they were put in the same place they were working on an experiment for for people to be able to go to the moon for astronauts to be able to go to the moon and put on a element that can help them breathe and also improve their brain capacity so she is a neuroscientist and he is an engineer so both of them had to work together to make this nasa project b has a, a twitter account and on that twitter account her name is what would mary mary carry do and <laughs> she was always like typing and then there was another guy also who happened to be adam but she didn't know that both of them so they were always telling themselves things like oh there's a guy that hates me so much i i don't know and i'm going to work with him and he would be like oh my god there's a girl that i really really love so much but she's married because B is always putting on a ring. So Levi actually thought she was married. Everybody thought she was married, but it was her grandmother's ring. And at one point, all ladies have done that, trying to act like they are married. So nobody asks them questions, I guess. The twist in it is, I knew it was coming that somebody or something would destroy the whole experiment for them. After everything was going on perfectly, then somebody just comes and destroys it. And you would not believe who did that. It was actually crazy because I was like, why would he do that? It, it seemed like a nice guy all through. But I kind of saw it coming too that he was going to do it because he was the only one that could but it turned out it was even worse than I thought. Anyway you guys go read it. I gave um, Love on the Brain 5 stars. I gave The Love Hypothesis 4 stars because there was a little bit of mix up with the communication here. Like I could not really i could not really tell who was talking when they were you know having the spicy moment hey guys so i was just editing the video and i realized that my camera kind of got overheated and a lot of parts didn't work so i'm going to i don't know i'm so sorry this video is crazy but i'm going to just tell you guys about the two books that were that i talked about but you guys cannot see, cannot hear it i talked uh, about book lovers by emily henry this book is about charlie and nora the beginning of the video caught my attention when nora was going to have dinner with charlie to talk about a book she wants him to work on but while she was going there she was on a call with her boyfriend and he was breaking up with her like on the call and she had to meet charlie like nothing happened and also charlie was actually going through something but we later find out in this story but charlie refused to work on the book so that got her angry and both of them that's why they are like enemies but to be honest i don't see that as a good enough reason to be enemies in my own opinion because it's just like okay i refuse to work with you so we are enemies no something happens where nora's sister decides that they should go to a small town to have sister time together and nora decides okay she's gonna go but apparently that is charlie's town nora didn't know her sister wanted to actually move her to that place like she wanted nora to also come to that village to leave so it was kind of like a story then they they met um nora now met charlie there and then that's how the love blossomed and firstly it was nothing serious because both of them believed like they had this kind of belief that both of them were not compatible but you know how love works now <laughs> i actually love the fact that even though nora decided not to stay her sister respected her choice 
and when their love blossomed and they were already in love charlie wanted to stay back in the village because of some reasons i love the fact that he didn't try to convince nora to stay like convince convince her to stay but everybody respected their choices and also nora nora left charlie there but it was sure beautiful the way they came back together it's actually really really beautiful i really enjoyed the story i just didn't really like the way nora's sister was kind of acting all weird all through ugly love you guys ugly love honestly i was just so scared to read this book because the way everybody was talking about calling uva's books they're like so many people hate her books so many people love her books i'm just so confused so i didn't want to read this but i later picked it up it's about Tate and miles asha you guys this book is crazy because when you start to read it in the beginning it tells you about Tate in the present and about miles in the past so apparently you are you are reading about what happened to miles at the same time reading about what is happening to tate right now then later you discover why miles has been celibate for six years to the point that tate's brother thinks that he's gay you know that kind of thing and tate <laughs> tate's brother would kill any guy that tries to get close to his sister because he doesn't trust them you know how brothers are now so when Tate is with Miles, his mind is always at rest, thinking that Miles was gay, but apparently in the story, he later found out that he's not gay. And my favorite character in this book has to be the old man that was sitting down uh, at the elevator. He called himself the five something something. I forgot what he, see you guys, I forgot what, I, what he calls himself, but he was the one that actually made this story interesting for me because it was it was being nosy but at the same time secretive. I love what Miles did. Is a Miles is a pilot and he made captain, so he took them on a jet ride to see the sunrise from above. Oh my god, that was so beautiful! I fell in love like with that point, and I also love the proposal in this video. The pro uh, video. See you guys. The reason why I keep saying videos because when i'm reading it feels like i'm watching a movie i really love it but i don't really like to watch movies that's crazy i love the proposal miles actually went through something very very traumatic and that part made me almost cry you guys it made me almost cry like legit i, I think i was recording a vlog while i read this so you're gonna see it in the vlog where i was talking about it but at the same time nobody should ever experience what miles experienced and that was why it was finding it difficult to love someone else and that was why he asked Tate to be friends with benefits where they just have sex and you know without any form of commitment at first i was kind of angry why would why would he you know ask for that but later i found out the reason and it was actually really sad like you guys it was really traumatic like it's heavy but the only thing i didn't like was the way Tate was acting like an idiot I'm sorry to say she was acting like an idiot like miles told you he wants friends with benefit kind of relationship with you and you are okay with it then why is it that when you start to feel like you are no longer okay with it you just continue to watch and you continue to do it like you can't control yourself you know it's it was kind of giving me weird vibes anyway but that's it so i'm going to go back to love radio i was talking talking about love radio and i was saying uh it's about prince and danny yeah so i was talking about this is about oh yeah they call him the love doctor because he was always giving advice to people so people call him on the radio they love his segment and he also plays music at the beginning of the book i was so scared because she had an experience with a college guy that makes her scared of guys so she just cut off all her friends and um, most likely because of this destiny i didn't really like her at all if you have a friend like destiny please cut her off cut that off so destiny was a wayward kind of girl and danny had other friends rashida and essie essie oh my god i love essie so much because i love her vibe i love the fact that she had this business mindset she did something in their school not in the school but in like the town square she held a program like an exhibit for natural hair to showcase natural hair the beauty of hair and to bring back back black culture and it was actually amazing to watch because um, to watch the book actually talks about how danny and prince fell in love he came to danny and he was like you're going to fall, of, fall in love with me in three dates and she was like it's not possible and she so many times she wanted to back out but thank god she didn't i love the fact that this book really explains how love should be and how love is like it's really really good see i keep holding it the wrong way it's really really good everybody should read this book yes so i hope you guys enjoyed this tell me which one of these you've read let me now go get into my march tbr i'm not going to try to read a lot of books this time around 
I'm just going to set a goal of four and not kill myself. So I'm going to be reading this one. Dustin Tao, you've reached Sam. Everybody talked about talked about it. it was a popular one on TikTok. 17-year-old Julie Clark has a future all planned out move out of our small town with our boyfriend sam attend college in the city spend its summer in japan but then sam dies and everything changes heartbroken and desperate to hear him one more time julie calls sam's phone just to listen listen to his voicemail recording and sam picks up the phone oh picks up the phone the connection is temporary but hearing sam's voice makes julie fall for him all over again and with each call it becomes harder to let him go what would you do if you had a second chance at goodbye oh my god oh my god like you call someone who is dead you call and the person picks okay okay i really really i think this would be so good i think this would be so good oh my god what how do you move forward when everything you love is on the line? Oh, on the line, on the call. Oh my god, I can't wait to read that one. Then I'm also going to read Fire on Eye by Elizabeth Acevedo. This one, honestly, the book is so beautiful. This book is pretty. You cannot tell me. You cannot tell me nothing. So let's see what this one is about. Which is just just boom boom. Emily wants to be a chef more than anything, but Having a two-year-old daughter and being 17, oh my gosh, she's a single mother at a very young age and still at school isn't exactly making life easy. The one place she can let everything go is in the kitchen where she has magical ants whipping up extraordinary food beloved by everyone from her grandmother to her best friend, Angelica. Emily knows though that there are rules she has to play by and yet once she gets cooking, her passion to feed will nourish her soul and dreams too. With the fire on eye, anything is possible. Uh, this sounds like it's going to be a very sweet book about maybe about how she fell in love with herself. I don't know. Then the third one I'm going to be reading is this one, The Sex Life of African Women. <laughs> These three books were picked by my students. I told her I, I just wanted to read some, so I showed her all my books, and then she was like, Okay, use this one, read this one, read this one. So that's why it's three. So this one is about from finding queer community. In Jesus. <laughs> Okay, so this stunning collection provides crucial insight into our quest for sexual power and offers all women inspirational examples to live a truly liberated life. Huh. I honestly don't know what this book is going to be about. I feel like it's just going to be talking about sex lives of people. And as I can see, there are different names. So maybe sex life of different women, I guess so. So these are the three books I'm sure I'll be reading this month. But... The fourth one, I'm not really sure about yet. The subtle heart of not giving a fuck. Honestly, you guys, I started this already in February, but I didn't finish it. And I didn't finish because I didn't have time. But I really like the book, so I plan to finish this also this month. But it's not going to be pack up my March TBR, I guess. It's just going to be like something I'm supposed, I was supposed to do last month. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your own TBR or if you're going to read anything from my own TBR. Now, see you guys in my next video. Uses. See, at this point, I'm tired. I'm exhausted from talking. I want to go to bed. Honestly, whenever I'm recording all these videos, like it's always crazy. I think what I'll do now is after I finish reading a book, I'll just come over and tell you guys about it immediately because I tend to forget the story. 